All right, student, the PSLE is just five days away. But there's a question that I'd like to bring to your attention because it has been trending in school's prelims. And I think that be, there'll be a high chance that it might appear this on 30th September, all right? So let's take a look here. This is a question I'm talking about. They first tell you that there are some chairs in a hall arranged in rows of 12. Okay, so what it looks like is there's a hall. You have some rows of chairs. I don't know how many rows, okay? And each row contains 12 chairs. And what happens later on? They bring in another 57 chairs and they rearrange everything such that now each row has more, more chairs. Okay, I don't know how many rows. Each row is longer with 21 chairs. But there are, there are five rows that are missing. Okay, five rows less. So, what can we do about this question? Let's take a look. Actually, this is an excess and shortage question. Okay? But how does a typical excess and shortage question look like? Now, let's ignore the original question that we are being asked. And let's just ask ourselves, how does a typical excess and shortage question look like? Teacher has some sweets, he gives four to each student, he will have three sweets left. Now, when you see that he has three sweets left, we are going to say that this is the excess. And when, when he gives five sweets to each student, he'll be short of seven sweets. So we can say that this is a shortage. And they are asking you how many students are there. So in order to find the number of students, we need to first find the difference between the number of suites he gave. So at first he gave four suites, later on he gave five suites. So the difference between those two is one. So the number of students would be excess plus shortage divided by the difference, which is 10 students. Okay, so this is the most basic type of excess and shortage question. Now, what do you notice about the excess and shortage question? You realize that, number one, the number of suites do not change. Number two, number of students do not change. Okay, so this is the same, this is the same, it is all constant. They don't tell you that suddenly the teacher went to buy more suites or suddenly there are more students in the class. They, they don't say this type of thing, right? So these two are constant. But then again, if we refer to the original question that we are being asked, do you realize that we have a problem? More chairs are being added. The number of rows of chairs, you know, the number of rows of, of chairs, right? Are also changing. So how are you going to solve it in this in this case? No problem. Students, I tell you what. What we need to do is this. We need to just pretend that number one, those 57 extra chairs that were brought in, they were already in the hall. So just pretend that the chairs were already there. Okay, so we just, we just come up with our own scenario where the chairs are already there. Nobody is bringing in any extra chairs. The chairs are already there. There are rows of 12. There are rows of 12 in the hall. There are many, many rows of chairs. Each row contains 12 chairs. But there's a, this bunch of uh, 57 chairs just sitting around. These are extra chairs. We can just pretend that this is the excess. Excess chairs. Let's pretend that, okay? Second thing we're going to imagine is, instead of changing the number of rows, right? we don't want this. Let's just pretend that the number of rows stay the same. Okay, that is actually, so if we pretend that the number of rows stay the same, what we are doing is we are, we are telling ourselves that the number of students, right? The number of students do not change. So we are making it constant. And in that way, we can solve it as an excess and shortage question. Now, before we solve it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rephrase the question so that it sounds like an excess and shortage question in the first place. Let's take a look here. I have rephrased our original question to sound like this. I will even use sweets so that it, 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 it's even easier. It's very similar to the typical excess and shortage question, okay? So I'll just say that Coach Liu has some sweets. 
if I pack them into bags of 12, can you see what I'm doing? I am, I'm tallying my information with the original question. The, the bags represent the number of rows. The number 12 represents the number of chairs in each row. So I just imagine that I have some suites. I'm packing them into bags of 12. If I do that, I will have 57 extra suites. Okay? But if I were to rearrange them and pack them into bags of 21, you see, I'm telling the information with my original question, right? If I pack them into bags of 21, then I will have five empty bags. And you see, five fewer rows. So then if you have five empty bags, that means you need more suites. If you need more suites, this is a shortage. It's not an excess. So you are short of some suites. How many suites are we short of? We need to know the excess. We already know the excess is 57 chairs. I mean, or suites, whatever you want to call it. But we do not know what's the shortage. So let's find the shortage. If I have five empty bags, or if you want to ask, tell yourself that you have five fewer rows of chairs. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about the chairs, huh? Five fewer row of chairs. What does it mean? You don't have enough chairs, right? You don't have enough chairs to maintain the same number of rows. Okay, you already use up all your chairs. So you have five fewer rows than before. So what is it lacking? What is lacking? Each row has 21 chairs, right? And you have five fewer rows, right? That means you are short of 105 chairs. So same for the suites. If I have five empty bags and I need 21 suites in each bag, how many suites am I short of? Five empty bags. I need 21 suites in each bag. I am short of 105 suites. So if you want to solve this question, it's extremely easy. You just treat it as a normal uh, excess and shortage question. Straight away, we say the excess is 57 suites. The shortage is 105 suites. The difference between 12 and 21 is 21 minus 12, 9. So therefore, the number of rows, original number of rows. Okay, remember, we are pretending that, we are pretending that the number of rows stay the same. Okay, this is the original number of rows. But if you rearrange them into 21 chairs per row, then the last five rows will go missing because you don't have enough chairs. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. You will end up with this number of rows. Okay. So what are we finding here for the number of rows? What are we finding here? We are actually finding the original number of rows. Okay. That, that means we are finding all the rows. So let's just try to find the number of rows first. Number of rows is excess plus shortage. Excess plus the shortage divided by the difference. And what will we get? We will get 18 rows. So we know now that the original number of rows is 18. So now what's the question asking you? The question is asking you how many rows are there in the end. That means with five rows missing. Okay, so in the end, Okay, we will say that there are five rows fewer. We end up with 13 rows of chairs. That's it. Easy as that. Okay, students. So just tell yourself that no matter what, they, what the examiner tries to do to trick you and to make you think that this is some complicated question, you just rephrase the question. Once you rephrase it, it becomes so easy. It's just like a normal excess and shortage question. Okay, so what I've done is this. Okay, I'm going to provide the link to download this PDF in the comment section below. And once you download the link, you will see my solution that is written right here. And at the same time, you will see a practice question. So this is for you to try. Rephrase this question, try to do it, and <clears throat> let's see if you get the correct answer. Bye everyone. All the best for PSLE.